Hi everybody, my name is Jojo Dong. I teach math here and um, just be prepared. There's gonna be a quiz during my presentation. So I hope you were paying attention to Dr. Hanstead earlier today, all right? So, oh, well I guess uh, I should mention that I'm gonna be talking about how I taught metacognitive learning strategies in my calculus class this past semester in the fall. Okay, so teaching students metacognitive learning strategies, uh, three points. First, why did I do it? Second, how did I do it? And lastly, I'm hoping I'll run out of time before this one. Did students benefit from it? Um, so let's uh, get started. So the first question of why, and I think you know what Jennifer just said about English 101, right, applies to math classes too, because, well, how many people took math class in college here? Everybody, right? Nobody gets out of college without taking math. So I teach mostly calculus, and so the problem is calculus classes have high DFW rates, right? And, um, and many students in those classes, right, that, that I've been noticing since I've been teaching here at Montgomery College is that they really lack study skills, right? It's not so much that they are incompetent in their math as in they're incompetent in just how to learn, how to study. Um, because actually, I think Dr. Hanstead's not here anymore, but I learned that math is a tame problem. Mathematics is not wicked, right? Like, if you think about math problems, they're very well defined. They have nice, clean, beautiful solutions, right? They're tame. So math should not be difficult for our students if they just knew how to learn it, right? So um, unfortunately though, at least here at Montgomery College, uh, our study skills courses taught by our counselors are generally not covered under financial aid. So they don't take those classes, right? The classes that they need, they can't take it. So I decided, well, hey, I'm gonna teach it in my math class, because guess what? They are required to take the math class and financial aid pays for it, right? So in my calculus class, I had some goals for teaching this. I wanted to help the students be more successful in my calculus classes, uh, but also help them to be more successful in all of their classes, right? Like John's uh, smart goals and all that helped his students be successful in their other classes. And you know, I set my sights real high, like lifelong learning. They should be able to do that, okay? And so, Luckily, I'm not the only one who thinks this way, and some um, you know, other people will back up this kind of thinking. So one of the texts we read in SET last year was Creating Significant Learning Experiences. Um, and so from this book, uh, Fink presents these two options, right? One option is you just include lots of content, right? You just teach them lots of stuff, okay? But he said, well, what, what's gonna happen? Well, the students end up neither caring about what you're trying to teach them or wanting to keep learning, right? They just get crammed with all this stuff, which is actually what a lot of people think math is, is just memorizing all the formulas, right? And so, and you know, what are the chances they're gonna keep learning this stuff, right? What are the chances that they get inspired? How many of you were inspired in your math class? Oh, good. <laughs> I'll have to talk to you then. Um, you know, but, but he says, well, think about, consider option two, right? Consider option two. Take the long-term view. What if we stop trying to cover all the content, right? What if we get our students to care about their learning, right? Care about what they're learning, and, you know, he answers the question, well, it seems much likelier that they will keep, right, what, uh, what they've learned and also keep one. To, wanting to keep learning, right? So uh, here's the quiz. The need to create wicked students, right? Uh, I did not coordinate this with Dr. Hanstead, but uh, here's your quiz, okay? So do you remember the reasons he gave for why we need to create wicked students? Oh, he will be dead. Hmm? Uh-huh, well, I I'll give you the first one. Students don't always go into the fields they study, right? What else did he say? They don't stay or get the jobs they want. Mm -hmm. They don't stay in the fields they start in. Yeah, anything else? Yeah, yeah, or they don't stay in the same positions. Okay, what else? 
exactly, the workplace isn't just, right, English, psychology, math, bio, whatever, right? Okay, what was the solution he suggested? Uh-huh, and how did he say we should do that? Do you remember? All right, I'll give you the first one for free. There's content knowledge plus skills plus authority. authority. Yay, okay, everybody gets an A. So, um, right, so this is also what motivated me to teach cognitive strategies in my math classes because, hey, math is a tame subject. So I'm not gonna right, get them to become wicked students just doing math with them. I need to give them something more. And so how did I do this? Well, um, I really mainly did this through three different um, documents I created. The first one was my math class primer. So this is a document I wrote. Um, it's kind of been on, you know, I've been drafting it for quite a while now, but basically it outlines my teaching philosophy. I send this out to the students um, a week before classes start and I say, you need to read this because this is why I teach and it explains how I teach. And if you understand that about me and you want to learn from me, then take my class. If that's not how you want to learn, you should probably switch to another section, right? Because I feel like when we teach, it's a journey we have to take together with the students. And if they don't buy into what you're selling, it's not gonna happen, okay? So, um, and the, so the main document that I'm gonna talk about, which I created for SET, is this Tips for Math Success uh, document, which I will go over in more detail. And the third document is a valediction to my math class, which I share with them at the end of the semester in the hopes of you know, pushing them along with that lifelong learning goal, okay? And um, I think when this is posted online, you'll be able to click on all three and look at all, all these things. Okay, so the um, tips uh, I'm gonna talk about um, mostly came from this book, uh, which was another book we used for our uh, set last year, was um, Teach Students How to Learn right, from Sandra Maguire. I think most of you are probably familiar, familiar with this book already. Um, I also borrowed materials from other colleagues, some here at MC, you know, some not, but, um, uh, Tom, didn't you just say all great, all great professors are thieves? Yeah. Okay, and uh, created my some of my own materials I created, and basically I just introduced tips throughout the semester, you know, and uh, I would discuss them in class for 15 to 30 minutes, and um, here's what they were. Um, think about your learning. This was just the introduction to metacognition. Right, just to get them aware of this concept. Uh, I also teach my class as a flipped model, so it was really important that I put this in the beginning so they understand what a flipped classroom is and how that fits with their learning. Uh, number three, I talked about Bloom's taxonomy. I feel like this is like the secret that we as teachers know, but we don't tell our students. And um, I talked about follow the study cycle, learn to read math, learn to self-assess. This is kind of like the what we would traditionally think about as study skills, right? Um, and then there's build good habits. Uh, don't do it alone, right? Get help. Uh, know your learning style preferences and check your motivation and attitude. Um, and lastly was develop a growth mindset. This I do towards the end of the semester to kind of push them to you know, continue learning and growing. Um, all right, so I'm almost out of time, so I will just go over it really quickly with, uh, you know, did they benefit from it, right? Uh, so I conducted two surveys, one at the mid-semester and one at the end-semester. Both of them were administered online via Google Forms, anonymous. Uh, the mid-semester one was after midterms and they had already seen their midterm grades. Um, the final one at the end of the semester was during final exam week, obviously before they've seen their grades, because otherwise they would have been gone, right? <laughs> Nobody's around after final exam week. Um, and so during the mid-semester survey, there were nine students who responded, and the end of the semester, five students who responded. Um, and so here's you know, some responses I got was from the mid-semester survey um, of the nine students, most of them had heard about metacognition, but a couple of them didn't. And um, 
This one, I guess, is the most interesting data I got. Uh, of the tips that I had covered by mid-semester, I'd asked them, you know, did you find each one helpful, right? And so you can see that uh, Bloom's taxonomy, everybody found at least somewhat very helpful. And I thought, wow, I should totally be talking about that, right? Nobody said it wasn't helpful. And uh, follow the study cycle. Wow, they don't know how to study, and yet they've been through 12 years of school already. But, you know, so, um, Anyway, so the rest of this is not as interesting, just some um, open-ended questions. Um, you know, has it changed the way you think and how? Eh, not really. <laughs> I've used some before, and, you know, so others seemed obvious. Um, you know, has it changed the way you behave or act? And uh, this person said, I was able to restructure my method of studying for all my classes. Wow, this is like, right, the answer John got. Like, it works for other classes too. Really? <laughs> so. Uh, and at the end of the semester, I asked them, well, should I keep doing this in my class, right? Because some students might be like, well, just teach us more math, right? We don't want to know about it. But, um, you know, four out of the five students he answered uh, all said, you know, yes, you should keep doing it, even though one person said it was only just somewhat helpful for me, but you should do it for other people. <laughs> so um, the last slide is about grades. It's not really, uh, because mostly I think the grades in my class are affected by my grading method, which is a whole nother story, so ask me about that sometime, because like Dr. Hanstead, I'm not into rubrics. So I do standard-based grading. It's a completely different presentation. Ask me about that if you want to know about standard-based grading. Okay, so thank you. I'm done. <laughs>